G'day guys, welcome back to the channel. Just making a video today in light of the recent news that we've got our first coaching casualty from the 2022 season. Leon Cameron has stepped down under a mutual decision from the GWS Giants. It's one that we sort of maybe predicted when you consider where you know GWS have been, where they were a couple of years ago. Should come as no real surprise that the Giants are on the hunt for a new coach. And it actually surprised me to realize how long Leon Cameron's actually been at the helm of the GWS Giants. He took over after Sheedy had this first two seasons, uh, who was the inaugural coach. And it's been a 10 year span. And in that time, he's coached 192 games uh, for a positive win-loss ratio. I think he's won 53% of his games uh, with four draws in there as well. So has to be looked upon as a relatively successful stint to have a positive win-loss ratio at the Giants. Uh, it's a pretty good effort. He coached 13 finals in that time and obviously made his way to the grand final in 2019. It's been a pretty bitter fall from grace for the Giants after that 2019 grand final. Obviously, they got absolutely annihilated by 89 points, I think it was, to Richmond. And frankly, they just haven't looked like the same side since. There's a stat, obviously, around uh, teams that get annihilated in, in big finals, particularly grand finals, and how they come back the next year. Well, sure enough, they went on to miss the finals in 2020. It was a pretty disappointing season where they finished 10th. Uh, and then the fallout from that as well was that was compounded by losing six uh, fairly important players, in particular Jeremy Cameron made his way to Geelong. Zach Williams went to Carlton. Two very good players for them, and Jeremy Cameron in particular is probably the number one player on their list. They didn't want to lose. A couple of other role players left, like Aiden Core, uh, Zach Langdon, Jackson Haightley, and then there's one other that's eluding me right now. But essentially, that was probably the, the off-season and the season in general that kind of broke the back of the Giants. Certainly, you know, as a potential premiership contender, that was arguably when their window kind of shut. The last year, they were pretty good. They made the finals. They finished seventh and managed to win a final over a young Sydney side. But the fact that they won a final, and in my opinion, you know, with the talent on that list, I think uh, there was reason to expect more from the Giants this year. And I know they were expected to be hampered without Toby Green for the first five weeks of this season. Season, but certainly not to this extent. They currently sit two and six and are in the bottom four of the ladder with a percentage is under 80% as well, which tells the tale of how far off it the Giants have looked this season. In that time as well, we've seen some uncompetitive losses against uh, Richmond, Melbourne, and Geelong in particular, and Fremantle as well. And you know, all of those sides are final sides at the moment anyway. They're sitting in the top eight and a few of them might go deep into September as well. But even still, for a side that's boasting as much talent as the Giants have, they have not been up to standard at all this year. And when you consider, you know, the, the nucleus of players that's on their list, I'll name some of them for you. Toby Green, I know he's missed some footy this year. Tim Taranto, Callan Ward, Josh Kelly, Stephen Cornelio. On paper, that is a very good midfield. You've got Hopper supporting that, Lockie Whitfield, and then down back, Nick Haynes. There's some genuine elite talent in that team, and it's not as though there's a dearth of young talent around them as well. we got Lockie Ash, Tom Green playing really, really good footy. Finn Callahan was a high draft pick last year. Isaac Cumming had a great breakout year last year. Sam Taylor, I think, is one of the best young key backs in the league, and then a smattering of other, you know, high draft picks like Lockie Ash and Tanner Brun. So in my mind, looking at that list, that's almost the perfect blend of like really good established players uh, and some really high potential young players as well. So I know that they're pretty weak in, you know, the, the ruck position. On top of that, they still haven't really found a replacement for Jeremy Cameron. Jesse Hogan's been fairly up and down, but even still, uh, that may not be the most balanced list, but that team is severely underachieving. I'm not making this video to, to lay the boot into the Giants as such, more just sort of adding context and perhaps justifying the decision to move him on because I think I'm a believer in when the talent looks all sweet at a club you do need to sort of look uh, you know other than potential extenuating circumstances you do need to look at the top and wonder if is the coach the best person to get the most out of the current players now in terms of extenuating circumstances well I would argue that losing all those players in particular Jeremy Cameron was a massive blow to them but you know last year they still made the final still won a final and frankly, it doesn't explain where they currently sit on the ladder. And I, when I look at decisions around, you know, who is the best coach for right now, sometimes I think we have a bit of a culture of, are we sacking the coach or calling for the coach to be sacked be, to punish him for a bad performance? Or are we genuinely looking for solutions as to what's the best thing for this footy club? You know, for instance, as an Eagles fan right now, I feel like we're probably doing the former. We're trying to punish someone for the state the club's in. As for the Giants though, however, I think we're a little bit removed from the adversity of those players leaving. And to be honest, I think this is probably a justified sacking. I say sacking, it was a mutual termination, but let's be honest, he was never getting a contract next year. And it's a tough one because he's a proven successful coach. You know, he's, he's overseen the entire period where the Giants have been good, gotten through that grand final, played in plenty of final series, a number of prelims as well. But there is such a thing as, you know, fatigue, coach fatigue. The, the longer you coach uh, at a particular club, you know, some some coaches just burn out. Some can do it for extended periods 
uh, but others can't. And I think he, he goes on to quote something Ross Lyon says. He says, you can't be 99% in the role. You've got to be 100% all the time. And I guess with Leon Cameron, he felt that he didn't necessarily have everything left to give in this particular role. So the hunt for a replacement well and truly begins. Who is that going to be? I believe it's McVay that's stepping in uh, to the role for the rest of the year. But, you know, obviously it's far from a given that the caretaker coach is going to get the permanent gig as well. There's a bit of uh, suggestion that James Hur could find his way to a head coaching role. For me, I think the optics of that would be a little bit off. I'm, I'm no James Hurd hater, but I think given what happened in the past, him also then being a senior coach somewhere else, I don't know if it's the best look. That being said, I think he's probably a pretty good coach. Then there's the suggestion of Alistair Clarkson, who's obviously on the market, but there's going to be a few clubs clamoring for his signature. I think West Coast is a chance to be looking at at that. The Gold Coast Suns are possibly going to have a new coach soon as well, and then Clarkson's probably also keeping his ear to the ground in case Tasmania get a license as well. But it's certainly not beyond the realms of possibility that Clarkson would go to that list. And it makes sense to me that he would be attracted to a list that actually has, you know, some young talent on it, but also some good established players as opposed to, you know, taking on a team that's staring down the barrel of a long rebuild. So I think GWS fit the mold perfectly, but I don't really have an opinion as to the likelihood of Clarkson ending up there. So in light of us having our first coach sacked in 2022, it kind of begs the question, what other coaches could we see potentially sacked by the end? of the year. There's a few candidates, in my opinion. You've got potentially Adam Simpson at West Coast, David Noble, Ben Rutten, Stewie Jew, and Ken Hinckley, all the ones that I think can be seen to maybe be underperforming based on their preseason expectations. As for Simpson, I think he's still got a couple of years left on a contract, and I think it would be a massive financial payout for West Coast to part ways with him, so I think he's good for at least another 12 months. Ken Hinckley has the immense pressure of a Port Adelaide fan base who are very, very impatient, but they've won three in a row, and it's still very conceivable that they could bounce back into the finals, in which case he would be safe. Ben Rutten, it's probably a little bit harsh to include him in this, but obviously the Dons aren't faring any better really than the Giants this year. They might have just climbed them this week on the ladder, but considering they made finals last year, I think Rutten's got a couple of credits in the bank and uh, it would have to go horribly pear-shaped for him to get the sack this year. So then you've got a couple of more realistic options in my opinion. David Noble has taken over at North Melbourne last year, but so far this year, they are horribly uncompetitive. And to be honest, if they don't improve at some point in the season, you could see the pressure mounting because I think it was only a couple of years ago that North wanted to make the top four within three years. And then you've got Stewie Jew, who I believe is in a contract year. So he's kind of in the position now where if he has a bad month, it could spell the end for him. So far, the so far the Suns are performing acceptably well. Three wins and five losses and just coming off the back of a big win over the Sydney Swans in Sydney. But the Suns do have this history of starting seasons well and it's all going to come down to how well they run out this season. But Jew could be the next one on the chopping block. But anyway, guys, those are just my quick thoughts on uh, Leon Cameron being turfed and, uh, and all the other possible coaches that may be uh, under pressure at least this year. Let me know in the comments who do you think the Giants should try and approach, you know, outside of Clarks and who would you like to see uh, if you were looking for a coach right now on the market. And also, what are your thoughts on the other potential coaches there who might get the sack? As always, I look forward to your comments. Thank you again for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.